Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today I'm talking to Aaron Senden about his new script for Reaper called UCS Renaming Tool. Hey Aaron. Hey John, how's it going? <laughs> Thanks for showing us uh, your new tool. It's pretty interesting uh, concept and the way that you've approached this is really interesting. Uh, it's not just a, re a Reaper script, it's also a web-based tool. And I think that's a really smart way of getting around some of the limitations that you know one or the other has. Thank you, yeah. Using web-based tools really offers some benefits like JavaScript's infinite number of libraries out there. Yeah. Let's talk about UCS. Can you explain that briefly for uh, for anyone that doesn't have any idea what this is? Yeah, sure. So the UCS is a system proposed by Tim Nielsen that categorizes pretty much anything you could possibly record into a group of around 80-ish categories, each with their own subcategories. So if we look at the actual UCS data, you can see doors is a category, fire is a category, foley and footsteps are categories. You use these categories to name files for audio content and easily find and recall files based on their categorization. In my mind, this is super important for anyone that's building sound design, uh, doing sound design work, especially if they have to collaborate with other people, creating libraries, if they are recording Foley and things like that, just to kind of keep their work at a professional level and be, work with collaborators and being able to find things at a later date really easily, whether it's in the project or like in the library. Absolutely. This this is pretty huge for like sound library vendors and even just field recordists. It's super nice to be able to have a organized library and recall certain files based on a broader category than just to try and remember exactly what you recorded 10 years ago. And this is different than metadata. So this is um, specifically file names and getting all that relevant in information into the file name so that it can be searched later on. That's correct. Yeah, a lot of the approach for the UCS was to ensure that this is universal. So you don't need to have a fancy metadata embedding tool or be super fluent with how BWF works. You should just be able to rename your file and be fully UCS compliant. You can share with anybody and have UCS compliant files. Cool. Yeah, so if, if you guys record rock bands, don't worry about this stuff. This is not for you, but if you work in game audio, fully studio, um, anything in that regard, then yeah, check this out. You do have a video on the website, uh, on your own website, which of course will be linked in the description below um, for the install process. Just to summarize it, one, install repack, two, uh, install your repository, uh, just paste the link into the import field. Uh, three, install all the scripts and the web remote pages. Step four would be to go into the preferences of Reaper and add the web remote as a control surface. And then five is launch the, uh, the website for this. And so once that's installed, what's it look like on the user end? Yeah, so on the user end of things, this doesn't work like your typical actions. So in the actions list, there is a script that gets fired, but you don't use this script. You use a web interface, as you mentioned. Right. So this so, is a, a defer script. Exactly. Yeah. So we're using um, that with uh, Reaper WRB for uh, a couple things. The benefit of doing it in a web interface is really you can save it as a bookmark. So if you look here, I can just bookmark my tool in light mode or dark mode. And once I have that, I'm good to go. I can access it whenever I want to rename files in my Reaper project. And for anyone that's not familiar with web remotes in Reaper, it's a local internet sort of uh, web page that's generated by Reaper. It says it's not secure on the in the header, but it's local, so no one else is connecting to it. Exactly. Um, and, and technically, this could all be run from a smartphone. Yeah. It makes sense to do this on the same computer in a in a browser. Yeah, it's easiest to have the full table in view. So far we've talked about file names, but this can also be used for naming other things in the project. And by doing that, we can kind of set ourselves up for naming the file names later on and, and things like that. So can you take us through um, the 
I think it was three or four different w- uh, things we can rename. Yeah, sure. So as you're well aware, pretty much everybody that uses Reaper has a totally different workflow. And my goal with this was to really ensure that it would work with anybody's workflow. So for example, if you are like me and you like to use the region render matrix and you load in a bunch of files and you give them regions, if you wanted to rename those regions, you select them in the region render matrix and then you open up the tool. From there, I usually start by selecting a category that's appropriate. So if you scroll to the bottom of the tool, you'll see the full UCS category table. And the file names will all have this category ID associated with it. But you can't really be expected to memorize 600 category IDs for all the 80 categories. So if you're looking up glitch, then you will see there is one specific category and subcategory for it. If you click it, it will copy that info to the category and subcategory field. And now we're ready to continue the rest of the form. So file name, let's say user interface uh, synthesized (laughs) saw wave. Sure, terrible name, but there we go. Creator ID, we'll say AC, so my initials. Source ID would be my project, so we can say R blog or RBLG because source ID is a four character code. And then user data, we will say Arturia Mini Brute, a synthesizer. And then for processing, you can see, as you mentioned, there's regions, markers, media items, and tracks. I'll click regions, and then we can select the region at the edit cursor, regions in a time selection, or regions in the full project. If we select the regions that I've selected in the region manager, as you can see here, and click submit, then all of those will be renamed appropriately. So if I open up my region manager, you can see these files are now fully UCS compliant with the appropriate user category and user category ID. The auto enumeration, so 010203 for all my files, and everything is formatted appropriately so that they all adhere to the universal category system. Awesome. So this really speeds up the process of of renaming these things. This this batch processing in this way looks really smart. Yeah, it's so much easier than trying to memorize where your underscores go and the correct order of everything and how long can each string be. (laughs) Yeah, cool. What else can we do with this? Um, we, We can also rename tracks. So um, something that comes to mind if we set up our tracks named a certain way, then anything we record in these tracks will automatically have the file names correct, like compliant and easy to find by anyone. That's correct. Awesome. Yep. Rename tracks, rename items, and after that, you're good to go. Anything else you wanted to show us with this? One of the, um, the benefits of using this tool, it utilizes all of the UCS compliant languages in it. So there are 13 languages that are currently in the UCS library. So if I selected something like Danish, the tool would reload itself. And if you scroll down, you would see all the categories and the subcategories are in Danish now. The category IDs are universal and those are all in English, but the categories and subcategories are now in Danish. Or if we select Chinese, then there you go. Cool. It's not a complete translation of the entire tool yet, right? That's correct. So the main goal of the the languages were to be able to search for category and subcategory. And then the category ID is universal. That is always the same for all of the languages for organization's sake. You can set user presets so that you don't have to deal with writing your creator ID or your initials every time or your source ID. So if I wanted to have a preset for Aaron Senden and a preset for John Tidy, I could do that and we could both work off of the same network and easily switch between our UCS adherent file names. That feature is implemented already? Fully implemented, yeah. So if we click Setup Instructions here, it will open up my Reaper resources path, and you'll see it tells me to go to Reaper root, UCS libraries, and then copy over the UCS presets file. And if we paste that here, open it up, and set up a preset, If we have a default preset, then it'll automatically load whenever you load the tool. So for here, I'll change my creator ID to JT. 
and my source ID to RBLG again. And if I save that and reload my tool, you will see that my creator ID and my source ID are already loaded. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's a really so, that's a really great idea. Thank you. So there you go, guys. That is the UCS renaming tool for Reaper. Um, there will be links down in the description to where you can find out more, where you can download this and install it for yourself. Um, let me know in the comments what you think of this and if you have any suggestions for Aaron of how to continue development of this. Let's uh, leave those in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.